I rarely put on sunscreen. Um, I like to get in shade, wear hats, things like that, or use melanotan because it does seem to prevent uh, any melanomas um, from uh, persisting. But it also does seem to have um, this really protective quality to it as well. If you are telling yourself you're old, uh, it's one of the most dangerous things you can do. And so it's really important to remind yourself that you're doing all these youthful things. The Bulls, when Phil Jackson showed up, they were not even 500, but he was able to create harmony amongst the team because he improved the, the intra-player communication. And just like musicians, it's that intracellular communication. You'll start to see that there's all these synchronicities in biology uh, as there is in the way that humans interact, the way that we have day-to-day -day interaction. All right. Good morning and welcome everybody to the Unreasonable Health Podcast. This is your host of the day, Cade Archibald, and I am really excited to dive in to today's topic. Um, last night, we had a, a really cool health accelerator challenge. If you're not part of that community and that group, please check it out. Go to accueastwest.com forward slash hack. That's H-A-C. And this is where we meet weekly in, uh, in a live uh, setting um, virtually and uh, go through different health uh, challenges. And um, yeah, I think the, the challenge that we put together uh, last night is um, get your uh, carotid artery scan um, through uh, VASO Labs. They, we have that capability in our office now at East West. And so um, that is, it's a really intriguing uh, scan where you can actually get your artery age. So all around the age reversal. So we can get a baseline and then let's, let's uh, create a strategy to improve. And so those, those are some big ones from last night. And then we got the peptide of the day. And along with me, as usual, we got Reagan Archibald. Reagan, how's it going? It's going awesome. Nice. Well, I know we got a peptide of the week is melanotan two, so let's uh, let's hear a little bit about melanotan two. Other than just getting super tan, what what can we get out of melanotan two? <laughs> well, um, yes. Well, primarily, um, you know, people have used it. You know, um, bodybuilders and people use it before they go on vacation to keep their skin tan. And uh, a lot of us just think, oh, it's just a vanity peptide, but actually it's uh, so much more than just that. And there's nothing wrong with having tan skin and wanting to look your best and feel your best and perform your best, no matter what age you are. But I can tell you melanotan too, if you look at the research behind it, um, not only does it stimulate the uh, production of what's called eumelanin, uh, eumelanin is what allows your, your skin to tan, but it also has potential effects um, that, you know, we hear quite often on sexual dysfunction. So, um, you know, if you have any issues with uh, arousal or erectile dysfunction, melanotan has very positive, um, you know, outcome side. The one disadvantage is you do get, you can get a little bit nauseated when you take this. But um, melanotan too is something that, uh, Kate, I use uh, off and on throughout the year, especially as the summer starts to come on because um, I rarely put on sunscreen. Um, I like to get in shade, wear hats, things like that, or use melanotan because it does seem to prevent uh, any melanomas um, from uh, persisting. But it also does seem to have um, this really protective quality to it as well. And so um, melanotan too uh, is also um, good for appetite suppression. So if you have an overexpressed appetite, and then I found it to be really good for people who have any kind of mold toxicity, um, it seems to help there. So get yourself some melanotan too, for those of you who are looking to get out in the sun without getting damaged by the sun. Perfect. All right. Well, that is a really cool uh, peptide of the week. So 
Uh, everybody take a check out Melanotan 2. Love it. All right. Well, let's let's dive in to today's topic. Now, we've uh, we've been talking about some of the hallmarks of aging and hallmarks of age reversal and some strategies around that. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm excited to uh, kind of further that dialogue and conversation. Well, and I think, uh, you know, we, we've hit on a lot of these things and I'm going to share uh, my screen with you guys. So, um, because I know some of you prefer reading and if you're watching this on YouTube, you can, you can see it. And for those of you listening on the podcast, um, uh, we do have a form. So I would definitely recommend uh, jump into our YouTube's channel, um, East West Health uh, on YouTube, you'll, you'll find us. So, so the nine hallmarks of age reversal, you know, we've been talking about these lifestyle interventions and today, um, you know, Kate, okay, you talked about the Langer study uh, yesterday and the Langer study, I think if we look at the nine hallmarks of aging, the Langer study gives you perfect context to why these are important because We've done a lot of work around the genomic instability. Uh, we've talked about that and we'll, we'll kind of go through and I'll, I'll give you guys a rapid fire today so that you have a reference place for the future. But the Langer study, Kate, what did you learn as you were talking about that last night? What Anything surprise you from that study? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's just a really rad study. Whoever came up with the idea is brilliant. Um, well, it, Dr. Langer, obviously. Yeah, out of Harvard. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but I, I think, you know, the whole concept's really interesting, but just the fact that your mindset and believing something can actually affect your biology is really, you know, at, at the core level, you can reverse your age uh, biologically just by um, believing and, and, you know, kind of reliving 20 years back. That's it. Yeah. And so what they did is they, they took two groups and one group was the placebo group. The other group was the, the control group or the, the, the study group and the study group um, were told only talk about things that happened 20 years in the past. Now this was 1979. So in 1959, you know, it's uh, they're talking about things post-World War II there. This is when the White Sox won the, um, you know, major league baseball championships. So they're talking about, you know, baseball, they have music that was, um, you know, playing in that era. Um, they only had magazines, newspapers. And so everybody had to engage in, in this style of, of living and talk as if they were 20 years younger. And uh, the control group just went to the same kind of uh, house and retreat but um, it wasn't decorated, you know, you know, 20 years older, it didn't have the same uh, feel. And what they found is um, in all the measurements that they did on this, this lagger study, um, they found that uh, everything improved in these, in these individuals. Um, and, and she actually wrote a book on this called counterclockwise, um, you know, mindful health and the power of possibility. And, and her name's Eileen or Ellen uh, J. Langer. And um, yeah, but she found that not only did um, in the intelligence, uh, visual memory, that that was all assessed. Um, and it was, uh, you know, it was like, like a seven day study, you know, and um, it was so short. And in her, con you know, her conception of this, this um, the study was that um, you know these these men in their seventies and eighties might start um, changing the clock in their brain just by the way they look at things because how often do you hear people say oh it's get I'm just getting older I hear people in their thirties like yeah it's, I'm getting old and it's like wait a second um, that's pretty crazy but um, one of the things they did they did the same test before these people went and after uh, at the end of the experiment 
And so um, they all, uh, every single person in the experimental group who acted as if they were in 1959 appeared to be younger than the control group and even showed greater improvements on the intelligence test. So the group that was in the placebo, uh, you know, the, the group that was in the, the uh, excuse me, the group that was in the um, study actually uh, performed 63% better than the ones intellectually than the ones who weren't. So um, they had uh, better grip strength. Uh, uh, overall, they had uh, better balance. So, <laughs> so it's a pretty amazing thing. So how does this relate to the nine hallmarks of age reversal? Well, um, if you are telling yourself you're old, uh, it's one of the most dangerous things you can do. And so it's really important to remind yourself that you're doing all these youthful things. And um, yesterday, I like to remind myself uh, to stay young um, with uh, some cellular uh, and stem cell rejuvenation. And so yesterday I had an IV of uh, some human umbilical cord uh, tissue. And then I also did uh, cerebral lysin. And the crazy thing about that, and cerebral lysin is um, not easy to find, but um, cerebral lysin does seem to have some uh, benefits for cognition. Um, it uh, can flush out a lot of those uh, beta amyloid plaques in the brain. And holy smokes, it, it, I feel energized. It's been, <laughs> it's been crazy. Kate, you got to try the cerebral lysin. I know you did You did the IV when, um, when you're here last uh, Friday. Or I think Saturday is when Amy did yours, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did uh, exosomes and uh, and uh, umbilical cord uh, tissue, and yeah, that was that went really well. So, did you do the cerebral lysine with um, your your cells? And yeah, cells? so you just did it all I, all together. I, yep, yeah, uh, amazing outcomes. Uh, pretty pretty wild. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Nice. I, um, yeah, I think the, the one thing I've noticed, um, is, and my sleep's been getting disrupted by, uh, by all if she's like, it's, it's been kind of a rough last few nights. And that's one thing. If you do some of these regenerative procedures, sleep is, is really critical. Like your body just wants to recover and heal. And it's, it's, uh, I, it's been a little extra fatigue, but, um, yeah, on the, on the downhill of that or on the, the kind of other side of it and feeling really good. Now, the first couple of days I could tell, like my body was just there, there was stuff happening. Yeah. Is- yeah. Almost put you in a, like a healing response. Cause it does, it forces you to rest more is what I've noticed. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I, I mean, I slept amazing last night, yesterday I was noticing, and even this morning still, uh, it's pretty early, but I was noticing uh, filler words and I was really cognizant of my communication and other people's communication it was really interesting. And, and it's created more clarity mentally. But I think the biggest thing that I've noticed so far on the Shriver license is my brain just feels a little brighter, it just feels happier. And it's been a long time. It's been years since we've had access to it. We've got the cerebral pep, which is a fragment of cerebral lysin. Um, but now we've got the whole complex for our brain rejuvenation series. And so, man, talk about an upgrade. It's been amazing. So, so as we look at these nine hallmarks of aging, one of the things that you want to continually do is look at your mindset around these because, you know, there are treatments available. So the nine, just to remind everybody, um, we've been on a bit of a journey on these nine hallmarks over the last five, six weeks. Um, but number one is genomic instability. So this is where your DNA is not replicating properly. And this happens when you're exposed to toxins or radiation and just even exposed to this thing called aging, uh, your genes start to fall apart. And so this is where you can do spermidine, resveratrol, vitamin D, curcumin, um, even the fatty acids. And then getting rid of all of the vegetable oils like soybean, corn, cottonseed oil, those, those can be very pro-inflammatory. Anything that causes oxidative stress is going to be problematic. And it's what's interesting is now that we're doing the uh, interior media uh, carotid artery scan and, and looking at the age of people's arteries, 
um, we're starting to see that, you know, that genomic instability will show up faster and faster um, in certain people. And so we want to start reversing that as quickly as possible. And, and I, I had a um, patient yesterday um, who asked, well, what do we do about this plaque buildup? And, and, you know, I think there's some very interesting things. Some of the plaque is just like cement. It's not going to move, but a lot of it, um, what we're seeing is if you, if you do the things that are in the age reversal, uh, the nine hallmarks of age reversal, these are the core tenants that will get your blood vessels incredibly healthy. And then the one thing that we're adding in is like the natokinase and the lumbrokinase. Lumbrokinase, that's the earthworm, okay? That's the 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 di huang in Chinese medicine. And um, and so those are going to be some super interesting things that um that we've seen start kind of peel off that plaque in a safe way. You don't want plaque to get dislodged and create, you know, some type of um either a thrombosis like a you know uh, or a lung clot or um you know pulmonary embolisms don't end well and neither do brain embolisms so there's gentle ways with using some of these substances that can um, slowly just open up your blood vessels because every time there's a clot and especially if you have high blood pressure that clot's just going to put more pressure in your system which starts draining your kidneys and uh, really can damage your energy levels. So, so these these nine hallmarks of age reversal, um, these lifestyle interventions, any of you can start doing these right away. So number two is telomere attrition. Attrition. Um, that's the the shortening of the telomeres. Once again, also caused by inflammation, oxidative stress, and so re regulating your circadian rhythms by getting to bed early. Um, taking cordyceps, astragalus, ginseng with some DNA uh, or with some NAD is all going to help your DNA stay younger. Um, that's a powerful one. And uh, the, you know, we talk about the peptides for these, and this is where epitalin is very uh, well studied, well documented as a telomerase enzyme. And that is a peptide. I actually uh, spoke to a client a couple of days ago and they said, I love epitalin. She she said she hasn't slept that good in 20 years. And we've heard this time and time again, but it's just always nice to get that reinforcement with uh, some people if if that um, deficiency or if that expression of uh, epitalin and that telomerase enzyme in your in your body and in your brain is is depleted over time from stress and uh, telomere attrition, then there's ways of rebooting it. So pretty, pretty darn amazing. Okay, that's what you're going to need as soon as all of starts sleeping great. Uh, you need, uh, we got to get you on another cycle of epitalin. Yes. Yeah, I, I got um, a whole stack. I actually had them all uh, structured and ordered on Saturday, but for whatever reason, it wouldn't let me submit that. So got to go circle back and make sure I get all my, my upgraded peptide pro protocol. Yeah, get that thing rocking because, uh, you know, and, and I don't know if you talked about this last night in the hack, Gabe, but um, um, we had a Go Wellness event over the weekend. We had, we hosted uh, about, uh, you know, 20 different doctors who came in and we all did the, you know, kind of the equivalent of our longevity retreats at East West and people got therapies. We put them on the buy board through the biohacking stations. We had really phenomenal speakers one of my favorite was garrett gunderson's um uh, talk and and he's he's got his new book coming out in october called money unmasked and he he goes through he's a stand-up comedian too and he's been on the podcast a couple times good friend of ours but uh that was my one of my highlights of go wellness along with you know talking about the nine hallmarks of age reversal but what was yours kid yeah, I, I think um, Garrett's was definitely a highlight, especially from uh, entertainment value. Just like he's he's an amazing presenter. He's a comedian now, an actor. Like, I think he's just super dynamic guy. Um, and then the the other I think just the most exciting uh, like uh, thing we're adding in. And I talked about this a little last night was uh, was the uh, carotid artery scans. Um, yeah. It, just being able to have like an age that and some objective data that says, okay, this is where you're at. 
um, you can make improvements on this and let's see what we can do to get your cardiac age um, reduced. So yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, because we're kind of a like a software company, right? We we do all the tests that look underneath the hood, and we look at your urine and your saliva and your your blood and your stool, and we get all this data from it, and it's all things. You know, it's a snapshot of your physiology, but your anatomy. We don't we don't do a lot with the hardware unless you bring in an MRI or you bring in your CT scan. Like you know, we 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 sent many people to Steve Marler's uh, company, Advanced Imaging, down in Texas, and that's super helpful. But now you can come in and we can look at your hardware with our ultrasound and um, get you some real time data in in about twenty four hours, and so. It's uh, it's eye opening. Yeah, re- really exciting and and really cool technology. How it's how it's been advanced. So yeah, that was that was one of my big takeaways, especially from a you know from an audience and from our uh, clients and patient standpoint. I think that can be a really really good tool to measure how how well um, their their programs are going. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we, we, we had, uh, a, you know, a couple of the doctors in the group, you know, like Tara and Paula, they reversed their, uh, carotid artery age significantly. And so it was, it woke them up to the fact that, man, you know, one of our mantras is no death by neglect. And, you know, if you don't know uh, what's going on in your arteries, well, figure it out because that can be an area of neglect in your health. So, so the third uh, hallmark of aging is epigenetic alteration. So as many of you notice, as we age, um, gravity starts to pull our skin down. We, um, you know, it takes us longer to warm our bodies up before we exercise, takes longer to cool down. There's just things that change and that's okay. But a lot of that is these epigenetic uh, changes. And so, what is really critical, and this is why having a, a mentorship program with our functional medicine team, um, with your health coach, with Tristan, your fitness advisor, um, we can help you spot the areas that are causing this epigenetic damage. And then we'll work at removing it because our job is to simply remove the triggers um, in your body and build up deficiencies. If you look at it from that core uh, flow. And then we're always analyzing, optimizing, and transforming. So we analyze all the right tests um, to, to figure out where the epigenetic alteration is. And then we optimize the pathways. And that's where we use peptides. We use uh, stem cell rejuvenation, and we use cell core along with uh, herbs. And so this is our Eastern and Western medical approach. And then what we find is the transformation really happens when you have mentorship and without mentorship, um, you just don't make nearly the amount of changes. And a lot of people think uh, that's the least important part of my healing journey. I'd have to argue that it's actually the most important part. I mean, how many of you've read a book and you're like, that was a really good book. Like I've read so many of Dan Sullivan's books and I'm like, those are really amazing books. But when I'm with him in person, it's a whole different experience. And um, Cade, you, you probably had that experience because you've read his books for years. And then when you met him and learned directly from him, what was the big difference that happened to you? Um, I, I, I was just amazed at how he can um, like his thinking tools and cause that's where he's brilliant because uh, he's he speaks really well and he's got these great cool concepts but then when you actually dive into some of his thinking tools and how he speaks and you know just being able to to think about problems or challenges or, or whatever you're trying to accomplish a little bit differently that's that's where it's been really cool and i think you know we you've done an amazing job of taking kind of his concepts from a a business organization structure and putting it into a health um, optimization structure. And it, it's awesome. Like this tool right here is, is really cool. And yeah. Yeah. Inspiration and in, uh, in the work I've done with Dan. So the mentorships and I find um, it's hard for people to be mentored if they don't trust themselves. And um, there, I, I had that, that realization this morning as I was reaching out to another one of our mentors, uh, Charlie, 
I was thanking him uh, for referring the uh, founder of Planet Fitness uh, and, you know, who really excited to work with. But um, I was just, you know, we we're having some conversations and I realized like the, it's much easier to bring on a mentor who, you know, they can help you get to the next level when you're already uh, confident in yourself because you know who you want to work with and who you don't. And it's pretty binary at this, at this stage. Now that I've worked with so many different mentors and I would encourage you to, um, you know, if, if you're like, man, I, I really want to work with East West and I, I'd like to engage and get my blood labs ran, or maybe you're on the fence. Um, well, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is get really comfortable with who you are, because the more comfortable you are with, with who you are and the more, more clarity you have on, on that, then you'll know where you want to go. Um, if you don't know where you're at in the present, it's kind of like um, a map does you no good if you don't have a reference point. You can look at a map all day, but if you don't know where you land on that map, you're still lost, right? I have the best map in the world, but I have no clue where I am. Well, um, that's the problem with mentorship. And that's a lot of the problem that people face when they come into the healthcare field is um, they have so many different directions, but they actually don't know where they are. So, all right, so let's go to number four, um, loss of proteostasis. Now, proteins are really important because we want you to have a muscled up future. And so getting the right amount of proteins at the right time and breaking those down are really necessary. So um, one of the things we're gonna use is the thymosin beta-4 frag, the BP BPC-157 pure, and then add in some enzymes to your meals, and that makes things really nice. I didn't mention some of the things on the epigenetic alteration, but this is where the heavy metal and environmental toxin binder from Cellcore can really help. Uh, and then make sure you optimize your hormones. Use, you know, like Fidogia Gresta, maybe you, uh, in clomiphene, gonadarellin. These are all really great ways of increasing your, your testosterone and your hormones naturally. Um, the fifth thing is deregulated nutrient sensing. And so as we age, and I was just talking to one of our 84 year old clients yesterday, and uh, she's so sweet and, and, uh, you know who you are and I appreciate you. And, um, and, and she's doing so well, her labs improve every year. It's amazing. And she has better energy. She's still playing tennis. Now she's getting into pickleball, but, um, but she said, man, I, you know, there's so many supplements that I take. And I, I mentioned to her, I said, well, as we get older, the problem is our bodies, we, our cells aren't quite as sharp as they used to be. They don't take in the nutrients the way that we want them to. And so it's really important to constantly be doing uh, cleanses. And this is where cell core is really important. That's foundational steps one through four. Do that once or twice a year. And then um, using some natural herbs to uh, and minerals to help create insulin sensitivity in your body because insulin is that first hormone that starts to break down with deregulated nutrient sensing. So berberine can be helpful. Berberine also softens plaque in the arteries. Lots of good research there. Chromium, cinnamon, those create an, in, an insulin friendly zone. And then make sure you're keeping your brain uh, sensing nutrients by alpha GPC, uh, aniracetam, nupep. Those uh, seem to have a really good benefit on the brain too. And get your cerebral license. Um, doing that IV was, uh, that was amazing yesterday at a great day. And I'm, I'm hooked up to an IV as I'm on zoom calls. And <laughs> so I, I was teasing one of our clients is like, Hey, look, no one's done this IV. If I die, then just call the office and let them know they need to come back. And if they want, you know, maybe they'll just leave me for a while just to make sure he's fully dead. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> how uh so did you you did a pretty long drip with it just in the in the bag yeah we wanted to um you know because it's um using it we've always used it sub q and i was doing yeah. a bigger dose um because that's kind of what the literature shows and so uh amy just wanted she plays it safe which i love you know dr steinley and our team is just uh, such a great medical provider I don't, I don't think you guys, I think you guys do, you guys realize what a gift she is. And, and so, yeah, she just wanted to drip it slow. And then I ended up speeding it up as we went. It's like, I think we're good. So nice. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so mitochondrial dysfunction. So how many of you would love better energy? And this is the one, you know, that, that starts to deteriorate and you go into a cell danger response, but methylene blue, NAD, um, adding in cordyceps, astragalus, uh, ginseng, these are all great ways. And then um, the other thing that you can really do is, is use mod SC, 5-amino-1-MQ. Um, these are great peptides to boost your mitochondria um, in great ways. Um, number seven is cellular senescence. So this is when the Hayflick limit is, is reached. And that's Leonard Hayflick. He discovered that uh, cell lineages basically have about 40 to 50 uh, cycles uh, because your cells are dying all the time and they're being replaced. But each lineage of cell can only have about 40 or 50 um, rotations. And then that cell lineage just becomes senescent. And so this is where using the nano V at the, in the clinic, using some of the light therapies can be really helpful. And then the cellular rejuvenation doing that, uh, not only will that help number seven, which is cellular senescence, but it also helps number eight, which is stem cell exhaustion, um, doing that once or twice a year. Um, and it's some of, for some of you who have really big health goals, um, even more, or if you beat yourself up for the last couple of decades, um, that could be one of the best ways to stopping cellular senescence. You can add in quercetin, curcumin, fisetin, uh, nicotinamide riboside, resveratrol, and then making sure you're exercising will really help in number seven. Um, and then number eight is the stem cell exhaustion, like I mentioned. Um, this is when the, the stem cells are always there. They're waiting to be called into action. And so you can, you can activate these cells through fasting. Um, you can do it through exercise. You can also do it by eating copious amounts of cruciferous vegetables that are nicely cooked and then add in rhodiola, some of the bioregulator peptides, vitamin D3 and K2, um, and then do your umbilical cord rejuvenation. It's been amazing. Um, and then finally, number nine is altered intracellular communication. Kate, what do you, when you hear that, what, what comes to mind? How would you explain that in kind of a simple way? Yeah. So I think just looking at how, um, cells communicate with each other, um, cause that's like our, our cells and our body, they're all, um, you know, they're, they're all trying to communicate uh, with each other. And when that gets altered or that's um, not optimal, that's like the beautiful thing with peptides is they open up pathways for better signaling, better cell signaling, better cell communication. Um, but if, you know, those, those cells aren't communicating well, we're going to have different breakdown, different uh, malfunction. And so really optimizing your cell to cell communication is, is key for, you know, a lot of, you know, hormone production, hormone, you know, usage, um, all those things. Yeah, absolutely. No question about it. And, and um, I like how you said, there's like this, this breakdown that it's the same thing that happens in organizations. It happens in families. It happens in marriages is when the, the communication starts breaking down, um, things get really hard because with communication, there's an attention that needs to be paid. And then there's intention. And um, if there's a lack of either one on either side of that equation, then the communication starts to drop and the entire relationship drops. And so, so one of the ways you can correct this is making sure you're resetting that HPA axis. So keep your body in a calm, relaxed state. And think of how much better you communicate when you're not stressed. I mean, what, how, what percentage do you communicate? How, do, how much does your communication improve when you're not stressed, Gabe? I, I would say like a hundred X when you're stressed, communication is very challenging and very difficult, um, hard to articulate. Um, whereas when you're not, um, usually it can flow out. You can, you know, it, it can happen a lot easier and simpler and you can usually get across what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah. It's, it's wild. And, um, you know, the things that we always regret, we say, man, if I could have a do-over, I would not have said that. 
And it's usually when we're emotional and it, we make the worst decisions when we're emotional and we say <laughs> worst things. So it's the same thing in our body. If there's not great communication, then disease starts to show up. And so this is where balancing your circadian rhythms with the three, two, one method, you know, no food three hours before bed, no water one, two hours before bed, and then no screen time one hour before bed. Um, add in some cortisol managers, some adaptocrine, leave out the sugar and everything will get better in your life. And, um, you know, speaking of communication, uh, I've just finished listening to um, uh, Phil Jackson and um, uh, Rick Rubin on a podcast called Tetragrammation. And uh, it's it's Rick Rubin's new podcast. And I don't even know what the word means. Do you know what tetragrammation means? Or does anybody? Uh, I'll have no clue. It uh, Yes, I did cerebral license, but I still, it, for some reason, that word never appeared in my brain, like what it meant. But um, but yeah, it, it's, um, it's fascinating because I'm, I've always been like, if you grew up in the nineties and Kate, you grew up in the two thousands, but Michael Jordan is still like, I mean, the bulls, that whole era was just such a fun time. The music in the nineties. Um, and it's cool hearing, um, those two talk about how music and basketball kind of work, uh, you know, hand in hand, they're both very kind of Zen uh, you know, Buddhist, more philosophy, philosophy being present in the moment. But um, I definitely recommend you listen to that conversation because they're both exceptional communicators. And Phil Jackson, I mean, some of the stories he was telling about Dennis Rodman and um, the Bulls and what he went through. Awesome uh, stories. Yeah, it was awesome. And then, you know, just hearing um, Rick Rubin has really inquisitive questions about, you know, what is it that is that X factor in the athletes that, you know, there's some like Vince Carter, who they're really good players, but they didn't make it to the level of like Kobe Bryant or, 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 you know, Michael Jordan, they just didn't have quite the killer instincts like the other ones did. And, and it's the same Rick Rubin was talking about the way that bands play and you can take a drummer out of a band and just put a new drummer in and have him play the same lines. And it completely disrupts the rhythm of the band. Whereas, you know, a band, it takes on its own energy. And so you put a group of five or six humans together, or however big the band is, and they take on a life of their own. It's similar to a team, you know? And, and so um, you can have a basketball team and, even though they don't have any great players or maybe they have all great players like the bulls when phil jackson showed up they were not even 500 but he was able to create harmony amongst the team because he improved the the intraplayer communication and just like musicians it's that intracellular communication with musicians and so uh, i see that as um, you know some of the hallmarks of aging is is look at the biology because there's this expression in Chinese medicine. They say that you are the microcosm of the macrocosm. So if you can look at, at the universe, look at nature, you'll start to see that there's all these synchronicities in biology uh, as there is in the way that humans interact, the way that we have day-to-day -day interactions. It's, it's not as complicated as we make it. So, so that's the nine hallmarks of aging right there. Awesome. Thanks for that, Reagan. And I did uh, look up, it's uh, Titcher Grammatin. Is that what it is? Yeah, Grammatin. Yeah. So it's an uh, it's, uh, old Hebrew term. Um, so Yahweh, name of the God of the Israelites, representing the biblical pronunciation of YHWH, the Hebrew name revealed to Moses in the book of Exodus. Um, consisting of the sequence of the consonants yadi yeah i'm not going to try to say that um but it just you know more of a hebrew term so interesting but, but so what what does it mean is so it it's, so essentially um where god is said to be bestowed um the name which is above every name so it's kind of like you know hmm. the, this is the top of the top of the Pyramid, the food chain, what, whatever you want to say there. Oh. Like, yeah, you know, similar. You know, you could put it in the same preference as God, I guess. Okay, well, um, great. Well, it's a good podcast if you guys want to check it out. And um, uh, well, this has been awesome. I really appreciate all of you guys. Thanks for being part of our amazing community. 
And, um, you know, really love the opportunity to work with each one of you to help you reverse these, these hallmarks of aging, because it's a fun process. And I love going into uh, the clinic and I see uh, you guys getting stronger, getting more fit. I love it when you guys fly in and I haven't seen you for six months, in some cases a year, and you guys look better, you're feeling better, you're performing better. That's, that's what this is all about. And so the nine hallmarks of age reversal are what we're doing every single day in the clinic. So uh, I really appreciate you guys and you guys enjoy the rest of your, your day. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Have an amazing day.